Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Cory Yoder of Coriander Quilts and if you're new here, you have stumbled upon the first week of finishing instructions for the Oh Happy Day Sampler Sew Along. I've linked to all of the information for this sew along in the description box below so you can jump in if you want to at any time. If you are specifically tuning in to see this video, you are probably anxiously waiting to find out what is the first piece of the mystery that is still left to be revealed in this sampler so along. Well, we are going to be making little star blocks today. We're going to be making 16 of these four and a half inch stars. They will be four inches finished. And some of you might be looking at these and saying, Corey, I don't want to make little stars. Those look tiny. But let me tell you, if you have pieced all of the blocks for the sampler so far, these really aren't going to feel tricky for you, especially after, let's see, weeks seven and eight. Those two blocks were a little bit trickier to piece, and these will probably feel pretty manageable for you. Now, I do have an alternate option if you don't want to make these blocks, because some of you might rather not do that bit of piecing for this sew along. So let me tell you what you're going to need to do next. Down here on my cutting table, I have two different instruction sheets. There are two different PDFs that you will need to download over on my blog today. The first one is the Oh Happy Day Sampler Finishing Instructions. And what this PDF includes is all of the cutting that you are going to need to do for the remainder of the weeks. We will use some of these pieces today, we will use some next week, and we will use some in week three. The other PDF that you are going to want to print out is the instruction information specifically for the star blocks. This is going to tell you what you need to subcut from these pieces, and then there is a second page that goes over all of the piecing information for the star blocks. Now I have pieced all of my stars. We are going to need 16 total, and I take that back. I've pieced all but one star so that I could show you how to piece these little star blocks. So I have 15 completed, and I saved the pieces for, for one of them so that I could show you how to piece this block. And so I'm just going to go down through, just like I have in the weeks prior, and show you how to piece this block. Now, the way these instructions work, these are the big cuts of fabric, and then these are smaller subcuts of fabric. So you can see here that using seven of the B strips, you cut pieces I and J. Those are the white pieces. And over here, when you're looking at your finishing instructions cutting, you can see that you have initially cut 29 strips an inch and a half by the width of the fabric. So we're simply subcutting down into I and J. That might sound confusing, but what it allows you to do is to cut everything ahead of time, and then in the upcoming weeks, you have the big chunks cut, and then you're just subcutting down into the smaller pieces. The other thing that you would take is your C strips. You can see over here your C strips is just one strip cut two and a half inches by this fabric here, the little gray honeycomb print, you can see. And you are going to subcut 16 squares, two and a half inches. That would be your K pieces. And then lastly, you will need 128 inch and a half squares cut from D. And D is also your honeycomb fabric. So you can see that you've cut long strips over here, and then we're simply subcutting them into the inch and a half squares over here. Now, you can see this is a lot of cutting that we're going to need for these squares. And as I mentioned earlier, you may not wish to piece the squares. It's a really cute setting using the squares, but if you wanted to forego using these stars and you wanted to use squares in place of the stars, you could do that. And then I have added a note down here below. If you prefer not to make the 16 squares, excuse me, the 16 stars for this setting, you can instead opt to cut out 16 four and one half inch squares of your honeycomb print or whatever print you are using in place of the honeycomb print. And you would not have any piecing for this week and you would have minimal cutting. There is enough fabric 
in this half yard cut over here that you could cut out your 16 four and a half inch squares to substitute in place of those stars. So that is an option for you. So that goes over the cutting for today and let's just move right into the piecing. We have made quite a few flying geese over the course of this sew along and that's where we're going to start today. You are going to use your L's and mark a diagonal line across the back of all of them. I have gone ahead and done that. Actually, I'm just gonna move this right over here because then you can see my instructions. So these are the L pieces here. And you're going to be pairing those with I. And we're going to make little inch and a half by two and a half inch flying geese. The first step would be to place your square right sides together with your rectangle. We're going to sew on that marked diagonal line from corner to corner and then just like in weeks past I like to sew and then I press. I make sure that everything lines up. Let me see if I can show you that a little bit better. Make sure that everything lines up around these edges after I press it out and then I trim out those bottom two layers and then add the next square and it will go this direction. I have showed that in detail in previous videos so I think you guys are pretty aware of how I like to make these units. I'm going to go ahead and make four flying geese using these pieces and I'll meet you back here to show you the next step. My four teeny little well, not too teeny, inch and a half by two and a half inch flying geese are now completed. And I have laid out how we will sew this block together right here. So you will just need your four J squares, your center K square, and we're going to sew these together in horizontal rows. I do want to show you the back of this little flying geese. Everything is pressed away from the center and you will notice there's pressing instructions all the way throughout the PDF pattern. So we are going to sew the rows together and you can see the pressing right here, top and bottom row pressed away from the center, the center row, that one will get pressed in towards the center. And then when you sew all three rows together, you're going to be pressing those away from the center. I'm going to go ahead and get this sewn up and then I have just a little bit more that I want to share with you. My final star block is now complete. I'm adding number 16 to my pile of 15 for a total of 16 four and a half inch star blocks. These are going to be so adorable in our setting and I can't wait to share more of that setting with you next week. Before I end this video, I wanna to talk to you a little bit more about the cutting instructions just in case you wanna work ahead on some of that cutting. So the first thing that you need to do is decide, am I making the 16 stars following the instructions exactly, or am I cutting 16 four and a half inch squares and opting for an easier route? Either option is going to result in a beautiful sampler. And then if you wanted to work ahead on any of the cutting, you certainly could do that. Let me show you exactly how that would look. On your Oh Happy Day sampler finishing instructions, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, these are the cutting instructions that you would need for the remainder of this quilt along. And these are for exactly how I am making the quilt with the stars. Now I mentioned and talked about in length about substituting those squares in place of the stars. If you opt to do that, you will need seven less strips of your B strips right here. So instead of 29, you are only going to need 22. Keep that in mind if you are working ahead on your cutting and you are cutting squares instead of doing the pieced stars. Aside from that, I don't have any simplifications or alterations in the weeks going forward. So you could cut these listed exactly as they are with or without those seven strips, depending on which way you are opting to go. This patchwork border, these squares listed up here, those are cut from your remaining pieces of fabric left from your fat eighth bundle. You should have a nice amount of scraps left. I know I cut all of my squares and still had a fairly nice amount of scraps left over. So these are just cut from a variety of whatever pieces you have left over from your fat eighth bundle. Just a nice variety of squares. Um, 
and then of course your outer border and your binding and your backing. And that's it. So if you wanted to work ahead, you could. You certainly don't need to. And I will be doing a regular tutorial video on the second patchwork piece that we are going to need for our sashing next week. So if you wanted to wait, that's just perfect too. That's all I have to share with you today. And I look forward to seeing you again next time.